guys. Welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. Uh, as you guys have noticed, I've not put out a video in the last four or five days or so. Uh, you know, there just really hasn't been many stories uh, that I felt like, oh, that's kind of an interesting topic. Let's talk about it. I'll probably speak about uh, our increasing debt and and our, our government running us into oblivion with, with the financial markets here soon. But I took a few days off. I've been working on the house and doing some other things around here. And I have come across a bunch of like little stories, little things that kind of tell you, you know what, I think men are doing okay. Matter of fact, I think we're doing better than okay. I think we're kind of dominating the culture war. You know, one thing that women don't do, well, several things that women don't do, but one thing that they don't do is they don't take accountability uh, for things that they screw up or fail or do horrible on. That's just the way. They, there's no accountability. There's no uh, uh, saying, hey, you know what? That's my bad. We did a bad job, et cetera, et cetera. So what that means is they have to they have to keep doubling down on the things that they keep messing up on. Furthermore, if their message isn't coming across, I think men know, or at least men that are maybe uh, uh, – extroverts or or men that talk to people all the time, uh, men know if I'm speaking to somebody and things aren't going well, um, it's time to change our tactics. Now, guys my age, we know this because when you go up to talk to a girl or introduce yourself or maybe ask for a date or a phone number and she blows you out, well, when women blow you out hundreds of times, you have to learn how to adapt and how to come at the problem from a different angle, or maybe do some self, you know, analysis to realize what you're doing wrong. But again, women don't do that. So they don't learn where, hey, maybe we need to change tactics. What we're doing isn't working. What do they do? They brute force it, or they try to brute force it, and continue shoving things down your throat. And it's not going to work. And it will never work. Even other women find women that are overbearing, cringy. So, so as the as the media and social media and uh, the the authors and the writers and Hollywood and everybody else keeps like, oh, the message isn't coming home. Let's shove it down their throats even harder until it works. It's just going to end up backfiring. So I got a few stories I'm going to go through today. Uh, I hope you sit back and enjoy. Uh, first of all, a congratulations to Aaron Clary. Uh, he's one of my friends and authors. Uh, he just wrote a brand new book. He literally released it the other day. It has one rating, and uh, he's already the number one new release in feminist theory. So apparently, whoever's uh, in charge at, at Amazon does not understand what Aaron writes, and they just saw the title, A World Without Men, an analysis of all-female economy, and they're like, oh, let's Promote this to number one in new releases. And that's what it literally is right here. Best sellers with, I don't know, a couple of sales because he just released it yesterday. Um, so anyway, his new book's out. If you'd like to check that out, he said he's going to have an audio in about 30 days. This is not a paid sponsor. Uh, he's just, he just released a new book and ta-da, he's the number one feminist theory. Congratulations, Aaron, as your as, as a man in the manosphere, being recognized as such. Um, so, again, bunch of small stories just showing you how we win. Uh, Jamel Hill uh, uh, dared Spotify, her employer, to give her or another black host $100 million to prove to prove it's not racist. Uh, Jamel said if Joe Rogan deserved $100 million, so does a black host. Jamel is now out at Spotify. So here, again, the theme of this is women are 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 not are not very good at getting their message across apparently uh because instead of instead of putting yourself out there like Joe Rogan does and becoming extremely popular and getting hundreds and millions if not billions of views and being so desirable uh that you get hired and paid 100 million no instead it's like you need to do this or else and uh, as you can see here uh, she's to leave Spotify and shut down her podcast network. She says she's unbothered. Uh, her unbothered podcast will search for a new home. Uh, Hill joins exodus of black podcasters leaving the platform. Now, is this because the podcasters aren't listened to? No, it's because they, these ladies are making unreasonable demands 
And to prove yourself, you have to do this. Look, let me tell you right now, uh, you're not, you can't use that shaming language for men anymore. May, now, maybe some, maybe some men will still listen to it, but apparently not, not the hosts uh, or not the uh, owners at, at Spotify because they're like, nope, we're not having this. Uh, let me close down these tabs as I go. Um, so again, another example here from Variety. Uh, you know, here you've got uh, three female characters. Now, when we talk about good characters from movies, aliens, alien, aliens, those are some some favorite ones to always bring up because that goes back to the late 70s. You know, there are so many movies that have good female protagonists that are action. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Salt uh, with Angelina Jolie. Not a bad, fun little film. Look at uh, Wonder Woman with... Um, uh, 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 Godot, I forget her first name, uh, Gal Godot. Uh, that was, the first one was rated very well. The second one bombed. Why? The first one was good. The second one was bad. So it's not about having women lead movies or being action because even, um, uh, I, I don't pay much attention to, to Hollywood actresses or actors' names because they're in Hollywood and I don't care about them. But you look at the Black Widow movie that came out and, you know, some people liked it, but Again, it was not written very well. Anyway, from the MCU, from Variety, after the Marvel's bombs at the box office, what's next for the MCU? And here you had, uh, like, stunning and brave uh, white woman, stunning and brave black woman, stunning and brave Middle Eastern uh, woman, young woman, uh, stunning and brave uh, enemy, you know, the antagonist of the story who looks like a soccer mom. And, and I, I, I did a live stream on this, and I predicted 50 million release. Even though they were saying 80 million uh, on a live stream, I predicted a 50 million release. Most of the other guys were guessing 55 to 60. It came in at 47. They had to drop it down. And it's come out worse than Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumanium, Eternals, all the other ones. It even, even came way below Black Women, which uh, Black, w Black Widow, which during the bug had an 80 million opening, even though it was also being streamed at the same time on Disney. So there's proof in and of itself. It's not about women leading the, the movies. It's stunning and brave. It's all about, it's all about bad writing. But see, here's Cinema Blend. The Marvel keeps the MCU streak of number one debuts alive but it's otherwise bad news at the weekend box office. If you read this, the Marvels keeps the MCU streak of number one debuts alive. You'd be like, wow, it came out at number one. And, there, and you even see right here, um, every single one of them has opened at number one. It's an awesome streak. But here's the problem. Here's the problem. It came out at number one when it had no competition. But this is part of what I talk about. This is part of what I'm talking about when I say you can't take an accountability for a fail. So what does the media do? What does Hollywood do? What do these movie theaters do? What do the actresses, every, what does everybody do? They come out and say, hey, it came out at number one just like everybody else. So we got to win out of this. And if you don't like it, you're misogynist and you're ist and you're phobe and all the other stuff. No accountability. And what they're going to do is they're going to turn right around and double down and do it again. This is a post I put out on Twitter. No men in the entire thing except for one single evil generic bad guy. How stunning and brave. Hollywood never learns anything. And this is coming from Madam Web. Now they're trying to make a, a, a story that's kind of Spider-Man-esque, except this woman can see the future. Instead of just having Spidey tingles to tell her something is going to go wrong, she can actually see the future and then fix it and then redo it, which is kind of like some movies we've already seen out there. And I'm not going to play through the whole thing, but what do we have? We have three, like, lead women. Three the So there's three women that are all the stars, and they're all partnered up, and 90 pounds, you know, throwing around, beating up bad guys. And who's the, who's the bad guy? He's the generic white dude that's generic and, and white and dude. And that's all we know about him. Let me see if I have an image of him. And he's grabbing the girls by the necks and he throws them around. And of course, they learn how to fight back and they take them. Like, this is literally doing the same thing again, again and again and again. Now, at the time of posting this, let me see if I can refresh the page here and I'll have to stop this so it doesn't. Uh, it has 261 likes and 46 comments. 
Thanks. Already feeling richer for not wasting my time and, and money on another woke uh, yawner. If I see generic female empowerment in any movie trailer, I instantly cross it off. Won't bother. I'm sick of it. Uh, uh, someone else says fights already bad. Um, some a girl says I'm pulling for the woman bug. Uh, I'm pulling for the women, but dang, sometimes we make this so hard. This is what I'm talking about. It's generic. It's generic stuff over and over and over again. They won't learn. And and this is why I say in many ways this is good. Hollywood is losing billions on this stuff because surprisingly they don't understand that you know what women like. Women women don't want to look at frumpy, like not not good action stars that are also happen to all be, I don't know, gay and dating. <laughs> and they're strong, empowered females that have no flaws. That's boring for women, too. How do I know? No no women showed up for the MCU. The, the, uh, uh, the Marvels, women didn't show up for that movie either. Nobody showed up to it because the women are tired of it, too. The women know just by being sentient and awake, women know that a 117-pound woman is not going to take a 280-pound man and flip him over the shoulders and throw him into a wall. They know this, or at least most normal people know this. You've got maybe 10% that are of the, yeah, you're stunning and brave, do it. You know what else women like? They like, they like strong men. They like handsome men. They like, and when I say strong men, I don't mean just muscular. I mean strong men that are decisive and, and badass and, and charismatic. That's fun to watch. Women like watching that too. But they won't put it in the movies anymore because, well, we got to have stunning and brave. And these movies are just, they're just going to keep doubling down and doubling down and doubling down. This Madam Webb, uh, this says, uh, coming soon exclusively, exclusively to movie theaters. It's got 12,000 followers. It's a, it's, so I guess this is, is a, okay? it's a new Sony movie. Good luck to you. And when it flops, what do they say? Men bad. Men bad. Um, Let's let's move on here to our, our new favorite. Uh, let me remember to close down these uh, as I go here. Don't you? Let's move to uh, our our, new, our favorite all long time um, spicy content creator, uh, Mia Khalifa. Mia Khalifa has some advice that men are so easy. We're dumb and we're easy. And and with, this is why women don't need to respect them. Let me let me play this so you can hear this for you. Men are the easiest thing in the entire world. If you are wondering how you and another woman got the same man, it is because men are the easiest thing in the entire world. I love the fact here that she's bragging that that once again all the women are dating the same men. And she's like, if you find out that you're dating the same man as another woman, it's because the men are easy to get. Yeah, well, yeah, the top 10% of men are easy to get. And yes, those men are happy to sleep and date with multiple women that are attractive and giving up their bodies for the men to enjoy themselves with. But, but they don't think of men as a relationship. They don't think of men as quality they don't think of men as anything but a hot guy to sleep with now. L women are literally turning into like the men uh, that are 10 or 15 years ago. You know, remember when it was bad that men men just slept around and hooked up with all the women and and men had multiple women at a time. And now the women are like, hey, we'll share all the same guys and LOL, we're having such a good time with it. And men are worthless except for sleeping with. Okay. I'm sure I'm sure that's not hurting any of the men's feeling. It's a lot less al alimony, child support and and suffering for the men. How is this a win that it isn't? And you know something else? No accountability. She doesn't care. None of them care. There's no accountability for any of their actions. And who's going to suffer? Is it going to be the men that are sleeping with I don't know dozens of women? No, it's going to be the women because they just get slept with and dumped. I have never wanted a man and not gotten him. Do you have any idea how many men have wanted me and not gotten me? There has never been a single man that I have wanted that I have not gotten because men they are cheap and easy. 
And she, are the- she said they're cheap and easy at the end. Um, here's what's interesting. She's been married now, I think, a couple times. She's had a couple of fiancés. Uh, I don't know how old she is, but she's creeping up on 30. And yes, she's gotten engaged. She's gotten married. She dumped them. She threw them away. Every man that she wanted, she got. And those men went, Mia Khalifa? She wants me? Yeah, all right. I'll sleep with her. I'll date her for a little bit. I'll have some fun with it. I've seen what she looks like in her movies. Sure, why not? And then they move on. Now, some of the blue-pilled ones were stupid enough to marry her or get engaged to her, and, and you know, she, she used them up and tossed them aside as well. Um, do you think she's going to ever land with a guy? Or is she just going to continue to age and have her fun and toss the men aside, and then one day she's going to wake up and she's going to be forever alone? It's going to happen. And yes, they are all, you know, we've been saying this now for years. Women will share the top men before they have a, an average guy all to themselves. Now, I'm not saying Mia necessarily would have an average guy. She's well-known, she's popular, and she puts herself out there, and, you know, it is what it is. She will get herself a whole bunch of losers. Do you think she's going to have a family with a good man? Do you think she's going to find a supportive man? No, of course not. So, again... No accountability. Just keep making those bad decisions. Um, this this is kind of a fail I thought I would throw in here. Uh, this is a woman that's excited about her divorce. Now, I think she's some sort of reality show or TV star. I don't know who she is. I just thought I just saw this and thought this was funny because again, it's another win. It's another it's another win for the men. They say uh, she was excited about her divorce till she heard her ex husband won't be paying child support. Brother. <laughs> I'm officially primary custodian of the kids. What about the child support? Now, she's very excited that she's getting divorced, and she's very excited that she's got primary custody of the kids. We, we know why. It's because of the child support. Because if you notice, right behind officially custody of the kids, it's not like I get to keep my babies and, oh, thank goodness, I don't have to lose them immediately it's right to child support literally in the same sentence i'm officially primary custodian of the kids what about the child support that's it tony that's crazy boy the tone sure changed when she realized she wasn't going to get free money didn't it why are you getting me financial burden with my children is on me? What? You know what would have been easier? Maybe if you had gone with shared custody. Then all the financial burden wouldn't be on you. It would be on both of you. But see, it was never about the kids. It's about the money. The money, money, money. Uh, where's my button for that? Yeah, that's right. That's what it's really about every time. It's not fair. Oh, well. Too bad, so sad. Another loss. <laughs> uh, listen to this gal. This is another one that I found. This is a woman that has decided she's going to share her husband with other women. Is it because of the grace and kindness of her heart? Is it because she loves him and, and wants to share his, I don't know, whatever with the world? Or is it because actually she wants to screw around with the women and she invites him to go along with Who's the loser? Her? Him? Society? Okay. I have shared my husband with 16 people so far this year. I actually think I'm obsessed. I actually think I can't get enough. That's how obsessed I am. If you told me 12 months ago that I was going to be sharing my husband with multiple women, I would have been like, hmm. No, that's a lie. So apparently it's not. And apparently it's a new thing that I just can't get enough of. And the funny thing about it is I am the one that is obsessed. Like my husband's like, yeah, cool. Like whatever. I'm like, no, this is a good idea. Like we should go do this. We should go do this. Oh, I've met her. We should go do her. And he just comes along for the ride. And I absolutely love it. I'm pretty sure I enjoy the girls more than what he does. Who's the loser here? Honestly. 
You know, so many times, so many times, I've said, and and we've all often said it in 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 men's spaces, women are like children, and that they they make really bad decisions. They're not held accountable for those bad decisions. And when things go to absolute crap, they will not take any accountability for what they do. And, and then they want to blame everybody else. That is like a running theme. So as, as women continue to gain and quote unquote, gain and gain and gain in society, they're actually going to lose and lose and lose. And she's the one promoting it. She's the ones and the husband's just like, yeah, whatever. Like, I don't even care. And she's the one that's out there doing all this. And what will happen? What will happen? Either A, she will leave the relationship. Maybe maybe she just goes full-blown into lady mode and dates the women exclusively. That'll happen. He loses. Number two, um, maybe he meets a girl that's actually like, wow, man, I kind of like her more than my wife. And maybe he bounces to that. Or number three, th- this lady just keeps letting her herself and her husband sleep with all these like good looking fun women that they're into. Do you think any of the other women are losing? No. And if you asked a man, let me ask you a question. If you said, Hey buddy, let me ask you a question. Cause she's not a bad looking woman. Let me put it back over here. She's not a bad looking woman. If you look at her, she's not bad looking. If you said, Hey, now again, she she's married to obviously a top five percenter, but let's just in general say, Hey man, um, would you like to be, married to a real pretty woman that lets you sleep with other women and she'll go out and help you find other women and and y'all just hook up together there's there's a whole lot of guys not not traditional conservative and or men that are marriage minded and want healthy relationships minded they wouldn't be into it but there's a whole lot of guys that'd be like yeah I'm totally down for this man if you asked a guy that and and you started spreading the word about this who would be the one you think suggested this? There's a couple, and all they do is go out and sleep with great, you know, good-looking women, and and he, and the husbands hooked up with 16 women so far. Whose idea do you think it was? The husbands or the wives? What guy out there is going to be like, oh, definitely the wife? One of them is really into it, and the other's not into it. I think you'd say, well, the husband's really into it, and the wife probably's not into it because he's sleeping with all these women. No. Pi fooled you. It's the woman that's really into it, and he's just kind of like, eh, whatever. W- women, let's say, this is another men dominating the culture war. This is a guy that's got life on easy mode. Now, again, granted, there are, what, 16 women out there that slept with a married winner versus being with an average dude, and you can say, dude, that's a huge loss. I agree. But we can either complain about it or you just realize it is what it is and you're not going to change it. You're not going to change society. All you can do is say, like, I got to look after myself and make sure I don't, you know, get myself in trouble and I don't mess around with these horrible, <laughs> weird people. And, and I, I find out a way to be, a way to be on my own and a, a way to be happy. That's, I mean... That's still a win, though. That's still how you dominate your own, your own life. You don't get involved with this craziness. How is this winning in any way, shape, or form for women? Pretty sure I enjoy the girls more than what he does. I mean, he's the bonus, but <laughs> I definitely enjoy it a lot more. And the cool thing is what we do for work, we obviously film it. Not all of them. We've- oh, shocking. It goes on only fools. Wow. Ding, ding, ding. So this is how she makes her income is she sleeps with other women and lets her husband sleep with these women. And then she puts it on camera and makes money off of it. <laughs> wow. What a win. Very empowering ladies. We've had ones that we haven't filmed because it's just been us in our element. Um, but we've filmed most of them, which is really cool because we get to share that. And we get to watch it back over and over and over, which is really cool. But I still just can't get enough. I still feel like that I'm, we're like always on the prowl for the next person. <laughs> and now I'm kind of wondering, like, have I opened up a can of worms? Like, will this get worse? Will it ever stop? It's going to get worse for you eventually, probably. This is, these, this, these are the decisions women are making. 
How, how, how are men losing? I, I mean, someone's really got to tell me. As a matter of fact, let me, let, me pull up, let, me, let me pull up something here real quick. All right, this is, this is from my own Twitter page. And, and this is from Rich Cooper. And, you know, I, I respect Rich. I mean, he, 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 he has a different view of things than I do. But he says, uh, men, how's, here's how you keep women around. Don't be average or boring. Okay. All right, fair enough. Make serious bank. Be masculine. Be competent. Know how to game. Be desired by other women. Have men admire you. Be interesting. Have an impressive network. Properly F her well. Okay, that sounds like a lot of work, actually, if you ask me, especially if you're getting wives that sleep with other men and women and whatever, or she wants to be an only fools even after you've been married for 10 years, or she brings very little to the table, or she's a boss, which, like that just, and, and, and what do you get out of doing all this? You get to sleep with a woman that's got an attitude? Because she's not bringing her bank to you. Uh, don't be average or boring. Okay, you can have some interesting hobbies. Make serious bank. Okay, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. And, and most of the time, that means you have to show you make a lot of bank. Do you think me just dressed up in a – and I'm not saying I have a lot of bank. But what I'm saying is like let's say I, I, I drive a used car because I'm not into anything flashy and wasting my money on a brand-new vehicle that's like a sports car because, you know, Rich does have I think a $300,000 sports car. Uh, be masculine. Okay, you can hit the gym and be strong. Be competent. Okay, know how to game. Okay, that's the. Th but that's just it. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of. It's a lot of effort to play the game. Some of you guys out there that have dated multiple women at a time. I mean, you're always dating down. Number one, because that's just how you date as a man. You have to date down, which means if you want an eight, it means you got to be a nine or a ten. You got to play the game. You got to do. Be desired by other women. Okay, that, that, again, that takes works. Have men admire you. That means you need to brag about your money or your success or your, your job because you're not going to have any men admiring you if you're, I don't know, a plumber or a welder. Be interesting. You can do that. Have an impressive network. That means you got to always have other, other businessmen. And, and he replied to me here. He says, Joker, when will you learn? Useful and hot women are just a byproduct of doing the work, not the target. The work is for you, not women. I aim to make uh, men better versions of themselves for themselves. Your advice, it seems, is to just don't bother and be average. If that's the case, why do you work so hard to make so many videos, build an audience, make money, buy land, custom build home, drive an expensive SUV? You don't even practice what you we, uh, preach. Rules for thee, not for me, eh? But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Let's go back to his list because I, I am extremely average. He says uh, uh, hot women are just a byproduct of doing the work, not the target. Okay, then why doesn't he mention, men, here's how you have a happy life. Men, here's how you be successful. Men, here's how you retire early. Men, here's how you are financially sound. Don't be average or boring. I, I can be average and boring and perfectly happy. That's for a woman. That's not for you. What, how is me not being average or boring? Like, so what if I'm average and boring? As long as I'm enjoying myself, make serious bank. Yes, I, I'm. as a matter of fact, I'm spending almost every dime I have to build a home and to buy this land. It, but is that is that for a woman? No. Is that for being happy? Well, yeah, to, to be away from people. And, and, and to spend most of my retirement before inflation makes it worthless, be masculine. I don't think anybody is going to look at me and say I'm extremely masculine other than I can grow a beard. I don't hit the gym and have these huge muscles. Why? Because I'm not trying to attract women. I want to be healthy, be competent, okay. Know how to game. I don't know any game. I, I'm not doing any game. That's not for a man to be happy. That's to pick up women. Be desired by other women. I'm not doing anything like that. I don't think most men that are not wanting to hook up with women or date, they're not worried about being desired by women. Have men admire you. Who cares? How does that make you happy? If, if you need 
to be happy, if you need to be desired by women, if you need to be uh, have men admire you, if you need to, um, if if you don't want to be average or boring, that's not happiness. That's narcissism. Like you don't need those things to be happy. Be interesting. No, 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 no. See again, if you were doing it for yourself, it would be do interesting things, find hobbies you're passionate about. But to be interesting is how other people view you, how other people relate to you. That's being interest. Well, you're not doing that for yourself at that point. You're doing it for other people. Have an impressive work, uh, impressive network. Yes, that's good for jobs and career and things like that. What does that have to do with keeping a woman around then? And properly effort well. Okay, but do you see what I'm saying? Like the, it, it, This is how, how you view the world when you're worried about how other people think of you. Uh, useful, okay, wait, useful and hot women are just a byproduct of doing the work, not the target. Then, then why not focus on here's how you're going to be happy men versus here's how to get women? I'm sorry, he can say one thing, but the, the, it's about a target. He, he literally said that. The work is for you, except everything that you're talking about is how other people view you. Who cares how other people view you if you're doing it for yourself? Um, he says, I aim to make better versions of themselves for themselves. Your advice, it seems, is just don't bother and to be average. There's nothing wrong with being average if you're happy. I think I'm actually kind of average. I'm a little overweight right now. I, I definitely need to get into better shape. And yes, I have a nice private property that I've purchased, but I also worked 10 or 15 years for that. I mean, isn't isn't that, aren't you doing that for yourself? And does that kind of make me average? Maybe my income or my, my savings for many years is better than average. But once I spend it, it's all gone. I don't have money for a flashy car and all that stuff. He says, if that's the case, why do you work so hard to make so many videos? Because I like what I'm doing. Because I, I like communicating with, with a lot of men out there that, that maybe want to poke fun at the society that we live in and, and that want to be happy and realize they're not alone. That's why I want to, I didn't try to build an audience, just people come to look at it. I don't try to make money. See, again, that's, that is the byproduct. I, I work hard to make many videos because I enjoy it. I have an audience, it's a byproduct. Making money is the byproduct. Uh, buying land, custom build a home, and driving an expensive SUVs. Well, that was my target, uh, not the expensive SUV, but yeah, to, to, to be off grid. So when everything goes to hell and, and, and not have it in the bank. So I do practice what I, pe I preach because, you know, it's not about women. And I have nothing against Rich, you know, for saying any of this stuff. Like, but I, I think he 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 misunderstands the goal. When the goal is, I want to have a home that I've always dreamed of. That's the goal. I had that money from investments and from when I was working at a network engineer when my followers were zero, when I wasn't even on YouTube. That my my goal was to retire with land. That's not the byproduct. What the byproduct is, is a, it's a byproduct of me being happy and doing something I love. Having a bunch of friends is a goal. Having other women find you desirable or find you popular or find you interesting, that's the byproduct. But the way he speaks in his posts, he's saying, go after these things, being rich and being successful and have a network and, and be masculine and all those things. And then he's saying the byproduct is the success you have. I'm saying go for the success you want, and the other things will be the byproduct of that. Now, it's just a you know just a little bit of, of difference of, of the way you look at it. But my whole point is is that women are not, are a a lot of work for very little in return. It's a horrible return on investment. Keeping a woman around is too much work. It's a definitely rent, don't, don't uh, own dating market. And I think he would probably agree. But my whole point is of all of this stuff is that why would you, why would you work so hard 
to get the attention and the love and the adoration and to get to sleep with women when they're so skitchy and weird and all over the place and unhappy. Why waste your time? I, I guess I'm just saying go forth and be happy and maybe the rest will fall into place. I don't know. I didn't mean to go off on that tangent there, but I just I think Rich and I have some very fundamental different views of what makes you happy. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think down below. Um, I brought this up. Uh, th this is funny. So GQ, Gentleman's Quarterly Magazine, uh, was written primarily by men for men, and it was usually about successful men. It was a little bit about fashion. It was a little bit about interesting stories, sports, um, and uh, what happened. They sold out, number one. Uh, they, they, all the articles started to be written by women, and they started to, they started to become like written by, owned by, managed by women. And what is it now? Now they have the 2023 Man of the Year issue with Kim Kardashian on the cover. Now, a lot of guys say, oh, man, we're being erased. We're being removed from society by women. Now, Gentleman's Quarterly magazine is now for, written by, for, managed by women. And now they've even got a woman on, on the cover as Man of the Year issue. And, they, and you say this is a win. I do. This is 100% a win, a, a win. Because the harder that men try to become women, the, the more unhappy they are. And GQ, their sales numbers have fallen off a cliff. I wouldn't be surprised if they're only around for another year or two, and then they're gone. And then everybody that works there, all the wokesters, they won't be there anymore. The magazine will be gone. They ostracize their own uh, uh, brand and people that used to read them and by trying to push the message. It's more cramming it down the throat. And what's going to happen, there's going to be an overreaction to this. At some point, the saturation is going to get so much that people are going to associate this with something negative. It's already happening. Like I said, if you look at the if you look at the new movie that just the Marvels, do you know they had? Uh, I think they had a an embargo or a, a uh, I forget the word that I'm looking for where you couldn't put, you couldn't watch it and post a review more than one or two days out from the release of the movie. Why? Because they didn't want the they didn't want the negative press to get out there and keep people from watching the movie guess what people didn't go watch the movie anyway why female superhero female superhero female superhero female villain woke so they're out again i look at this as a win you have to start framing it in the right way instead of looking at, at all these as, as losses these are all wins they're destroying themselves, desperately trying to get out a message, and no one is listening to them anymore. Uh, from the New York Post, company behind Miss Universe files for bankruptcy after the LDHD, LGHD TV controversy. They keep bringing in men that look like women and trying to pass them off like women. And now, like conservative women don't want to watch this stuff. Men don't want to watch this stuff. Uh, really, only the far left that are all about this stuff, and they don't even watch it. They just stunning and brave it on Twitter, and they're like, oh, yes, this is awesome. But no one's watching it. Uh, well, the 2023 Miss Universe pageant, known for its inclusion contestants, uh, will still take place this Saturday. The JKN Global Group behind it filed for bankruptcy just days before the event. Thai business tycoon and uh, uh, transitioning activist and whatever of the JKN uh, group bought the organization for $20 million in 2022. That's all it took for Miss Universe's 2020, in 2022. All it took to get the Miss Universe pageant was $20 million. That's nothing. And now... The franchise itself, a year later, appears to be unstable. It's done. It's failing. Why? We know why. Because the, the men don't care. Uh, women with their heads screwed on straight don't don't care. Well, again, but they'll they're gonna and, and this is why I say that this is why I say again that we're dominating the culture war because 
the the craziness, the over the top, the feminism, the nut, all all that stuff. It's going bankrupt. They keep throwing money behind it, trying to push the message, and no one's listening anymore. And so they're falling off a cliff. This is nothing but a win. And how are men dominating? By just being here. Like, we're not even partaking in any of this craziness. We're not out there, you know, marching or throwing protests. We're just quietly doing our jobs, you know, surviving, doing our thing day by day as they go crazier and crazier and crazier. And they're losing because of it. Um, I, I, there's, let's see, uh, I already did that one. There's one last one here, and this is from the New York Times. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to read part of it. This is literally just written a couple days ago. Why aren't more people marrying? Ask women what dating is like. Oh, it's the men's fault. Just ask the women. But here's the part. I, I wanted to read this first little snippet in here. Because, again, this explains everything you need to know about our culture. Sarah Camino, who had been in a relationship for two years when she found out she was pregnant. Uh, Sarah Camino had been in a relationship for two years when she found out she was pregnant. The father whom she met while they were both working at a restaurant in Times Square, was initially excited. But he had been, okay, now, remember, this is, this Sarah Camino had been, been dating this guy for two years, and, and she got knocked up. But he'd been using illicit substances lately and had been fired from his last four jobs. When she ventured that she, w- that she was scared she might wind up raising the child alone, he got defensive and walked out. She and her daughter now live in Florida with her parents, and he's not a part of their lives. Gee, you mean the guy that, wasn't use- that was using illicit substances and had been fired from his last four jobs? Turns out wasn't a good father figure? <gasps> say it isn't so. You can almost say this is shocking. Ms. Camino, a beautician and hospitality worker, checks all the boxes of the demographic that's been targeted for advice in recent months by an array of columnists and authors who've argued for the promotion and prioritizing of marriage, sometimes for the sake of overall happiness, but more often for the sake of the children's well-being. She's a 37-year-old single mother without a college degree. She cares deeply about her child's happiness and about providing her with a good future. When I asked... Uh, what, what she made of the advice to Mary, she was skeptical. I don't think things are perfect like that. She planned to stay with a father, but that's not how it happened. I didn't think he was going to leave me like this. She said of the guy that was doing substances and had been fired from his last four jobs. So again, the women will not take accountability for the men they're dating. They're, they won't take accountability for the fact that, you know, he, he used and he got fired from all his jobs. So she continued to date him, wasn't careful, got pregnant, and then is surprised about it. That's why people aren't marrying. Because, see, in this scenario, it's the guy's fault. She picks probably one of the worst people to become a father or to be a father or to even be a husband. She picks him. And then when all this happens and he's like, I'm out, she's like, see, men are terrible. Men are horrible. How dare men be like this? Do I have my Greta? Where's my Greta? How dare men? How dare you? How dare men be like this? Is this who you're using as the litmus test for quality of men that are not getting married? Well, that's news to me, champ. Now, I'm not going to read, like I said, I'm not going to read through the whole article, but they've got a couple more examples about this. They're like, oh, the men are are ill, bad behaving, and men are irresponsible, and men are not reliable, and men are just overgrown children. Well, why should men, this is kind of like men be better. And the guy's saying, why? Why should I be better? I'm five, let's say a guy's five, six, or five, seven. A guy that's five, six, or five, seven. Or a guy that's balding. Or maybe a guy that, that doesn't have a, a high paying job. Or a guy that has a couple pounds extra. All these women have been told don't bother with him, don't date him, don't, don't even waste your time. So who's the guy going to be better for? 
Now, I think he should do well for himself and he should be in good shape and he should not be overweight and he should be healthy and have a good group of friends. But why is he going to better himself for zero opportunity at women? And the guys that are 6'2 and good looking and they've hit the gym and they get all the attention and all the women want to sleep with them, why does he need to be better? Who's he got to improve himself for? He's already got women pounding down his door, even if he is using illicit substances and even if he is getting fired from all his job and he's a loser, why does he need to improve him, himself? He's getting all the attention as it is. You know, there's a post here I made the other day right here. This is from uh, Arx Hominem. B. Jeremy Meeks. Now, if you guys remember, this is the guy that was in prison. I don't remember what he did. But all the women went crazy because he's such a good-looking guy. He was all over the news at the time. B. Jeremy Meeks, get in prison for robbery and injuring a kid. Have women start fun have women start a fundraising campaign and collect nine hundred thousand dollars to get you out of prison. Become a model. Marry a billionaire's daughter. Cheat on her. She forgives you. Why did all this happen to this guy? Because he's good looking. Do you think women are going to set up a GoFundMe for nine hundred grand to get me or some other average dude out of jail? No. Do you think you're going to marry a billionaire's daughter even though you've, you've, you've been in prison? No. Do you think you could cheat on her and she still forgives you? No. Why can he? I think that's self-obvious. He has a jaw that looks like it could smash bricks. And he's a good look. And he's, you know, the dark skin and the nice blue eyes, even though he's got the tats and everything else. So if he doesn't have to try, if he can literally be the worst human being in the world— well, not literally, but I mean, he's not a good guy. If he can put in zero effort and literally marry a billionaire's daughter and cheat on her and gets forgiven and rando women collect 900 grand to get you out of prison. And then you take the guy that's the average plumber, welder, who's working hard, trying to put food on the table, but he doesn't look like this guy. And maybe he's a little shorter than average. He's five, nine or whatever. And he doesn't have a shot. Why would he try any harder? Why would this guy try? All they're doing is incentivizing men not to try. And so men do still try. Men do still get ahead, but they better be doing it for themselves, not for women, not for society, not for our government, not for our military. They need to do it for themselves. And that's how men are dominating the culture war. Men are dominating the culture war by not participating, as crazy as that sounds. By not being crazy, by not being losers, by just going nine to five and working hard and making themselves more successful and putting more money in the bank and bettering themselves and just being quiet, what's the media doing? The media is promoting all the crazies. The only fools and the women that are horrible and all these other th and, and strong and stunning and brave in the media and in movies. And again, men are doing nothing. They're just doing their nine to five. And by, by letting the craziest talk the loudest, women are shooting themselves in the foot. They, they, they're the ones that are losing all of this by being crazy. And the men are just, they're kind of dominating it by not doing anything. Women are going to fail. Everything's going to come crashing down because the strong men are now the silent men. The strong men are now the selfish men that are just doing what's best for them. It's the weak men that get all the attention. It's the weak, uh, effeminate men. It's the weak men that are slay girl and all this other stuff. They're struggling. They're the ones having their voices put forward, but they're also the ones that are struggling and unhappy. The women are screaming to the high hills that they're unhappy and that men are awful and they don't want to work these hours. And they're not making enough money. What are the men doing? Just shutting up and going to work, getting that second, second job, being successful. And, and when I say being successful, it doesn't mean being rich. It means being okay. The women are not all right. The men are. And it's the women that are the loudest about it. And so men dominate the culture war by just doing their thing and not participating in the craziness. That's how the men will win. And when it all comes crashing down, the guys that keep their nose to the ground and keep 
hustling and keep working hard and keep doing well for themselves, they're the ones that win. The rest, the screamers, the ones complaining, the ones saying, ah, oh, you need to pay attention to me and good luck to you. They're the ones that are ultimately going to lose. And, and they're the ones that are making themselves lose. That's the ironic part. Uh, guys, if you enjoy my work, as always, jump over to Locals. Um, I got a great group of people over there. We have movie nights, lots of fun activities. It's four bucks a month if you sign up for a year, less than half the price of a crappy cup of Starbucks coffee. So join me over there today. I would appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next one.